I have a confession to make. I haven't seen that many Disney films. Yes, hello YouTube, welcome back. I'm That Ginger Brit, you're looking lovely, and it's time for another video. So the intro. Hmm. Anyone from Tumblr might be thinking, that's not a good thing. We love Disney. Disney. You need it in your life. Yeah, I figured that a while ago. Let me explain why I haven't seen that much Disney. Basically, the way my childhood worked was I would pick about five different films that I really enjoyed and I would watch them over and over and over and over again like a million times and I would never try anything new. So this sort of led me to watching Treasure Planet, Harry Potter, Never Ending Story, Pokemon just thousands of times. I practically memorised the films but I didn't watch much of anything else at all. So what I've decided to do, over the next couple of weeks, because free time and stuff, over the next couple of weeks, I plan to watch all of the animated main series Disney films that I haven't seen. Yeah! So what I've done is I've written a list. I don't know if you can read what's on the list, because cameras, light, paper, hates it, but... Basically, here's a list of all the films I've not seen. It's quite substantial. I've already seen two of them on this list. It's a checklist, so I'm just ticking them off. I've already seen two, those being Snow White and Pinocchio. And I really sort of, maybe, I don't know. They were good films. They were Disney films. I won't give you my full thoughts on them. I could actually do that in another video. Oh, that'd be nice. I'll give you our full thoughts on the films. Yeah, I'll do that. Next video, Snow White, Extended Thoughts. Sounds good? Yeah. Yeah, it does. So I'm working my way through the list, and hopefully, after a couple of weeks, I'll be all caught up on my Disney movies. Then I move on to Pixar. What I want you to do, as my lovely viewer, is drop a comment down below telling me what Disney films your favourite, which ones I should enjoy or you think that I will enjoy and why I'll enjoy it. Basically, just tell me what your thoughts on Disney. And then, as soon as I've watched the films, we can have a nice little discussion about what, how good they are and what they are and blah, 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 stuff like that. Disney films are great. Right, well, the second part of this video, as you might be able to tell from the title, is about books. And now, I'm just going to be straight with you. I have a lot of books to read, like a metric book ton, just so many books, all of the books. Because what's recently happened in my life for school is I've just read, read? I've just read, I've just read two books. <laughs> I need a cigarette. I've just, I've just read two books, all right. I read two books from my English work, I'm going to stop the pathetic accent. I read two books, those being 1984 and A Handmaid's Tale. You've probably heard of the first, maybe not Handmaid's. What they are, are just both dystopian fiction. So they deal with what, the idea is that it could happen, it's not so much science fiction as it's speculative, as the author of A Handmaid's Tale would say. It's like, well, you should know what dystopia is. It's the opposite of utopia, so everything that's wrong with the world, exaggerated. And it's ideas of what could happen in the future. So 1984 deals with, like, surveillance and how we're constantly being watched and maybe being controlled by Big Brother or the government and those kind of concepts. And A Handmaid's Tale instead deals with um, the concepts of, like, sexism and feminism and rape culture, of how sexual exploration from women uh, is kind of, I don't know, sacred and, and these women have basically just become wombs on legs. It's a really interesting book. I would say you should look into them both. I enjoyed 1984 a lot more than I did Handmaid's Tale, but a lot of the people in my class would disagree with me. So it's completely up to your views on books and stuff as to whether or not you enjoy them. But 
they were interesting, and now I've finished them, so I get a chance to do my own books. So I have a list to work from. They're right there, right in front of me. Oh boy, I'm just going to get right on with it, show you the books. First on the list is And Another Thing by Eo uh, e in Colfer. That's his name. You should know him. He's got a very strange name. It's part six of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy, and that's a series that I really love. It doesn't... It doesn't get worse with each book, which is a really nice thing as well. They're not the kind of books where you think, oh, this one was the best and, and this one really went downhill. Because they're practically the same book, just extended across five. Uh, just... Here they are, my lovely set of them. There, let's see if I can actually get this out. <clears throat> no, it's not coming. Uh, there we go. Right, so here's the set. The first one's nice and special because it's for the film. I hate when books do that, have a film cover, whatever. And here's the standardised rest of the lot. They're absolutely lovely, quite short as well. Absolutely brilliant. I adore them so much. They're basically just the same book continued. The writing style never changes. The plot is always all over the place, so there's never any fear of it going, oh, what are they doing in book three? It's like, what are they doing in chapter seven of book two? It's boof. So yeah, essentially, I'm hoping that Eo, oh, Eo, Owen, Owen is probably how it's pronounced, just Owen. <laughs> I'm hoping that he can continue Douglas Adams' sort of writing style and really dry humour, that sort of British comedy that I absolutely adore. And it, I just hope it's got the same silliness, the same sci-fi aspects. It's going to be... It's going to be great. I'm sure it is. And after that is one which I probably should have read already. Uh, I got it for Christmas. Again, people from Tumblr will yell at me for not having read it. But I figured, you know, with with the film coming out soon, and with it just being an outstanding book, and with me absolutely adoring the author, he's a fantastic fellow, I picked up this little thing. You know, The Fault in Our Stars. <sighs> I've been told by people I know that I'll read it in like no time at all because it's so gripping. And it's, it's not too long, it's like, what is it, just over 300 pages. So I can do that in a couple of sessions. I say sessions, one session's like a few hours, but you know, a couple of reading sessions, that'll be done with. Absolutely lovely, can't wait to begin. The cover's lovely, you can't feel it through a camera, but I just love when books have that kind of matte cover to them. It's just something I really enjoy. And I can't wait to read the book. So, that's going to be lovely. And then this next one's a bit of a weird one, because it's not really a book. It's an audiobook. It's Sharder. And again, by Douglas Adams. Lovely guy. I say by Douglas Adams. He wrote the scripts and then lovely bloke called Gareth Roberts turned it into a book, which was then adapted into an audiobook by... Who adapted it? Audio Go, apparently. Th those people. It's like 10 discs. It's a 10 disc long thing. It runs for 11 hours, 30 minutes. And I can't wait to listen to it. It's going to be so good. I used to own the videotape, I know, videotape, of the original episodes that were never aired, I don't believe, along with Tom Baker reading like an adaptation of the scripts to fill in the blanks for the stuff that wasn't filmed. And I adored it when I was younger, and I'm going to adore it again. I just know it. It's a great story from the Fourth Doctor era. It's going to be lovely. This one, this next one I picked up quite recently. I had a £5 WH Smith voucher, and I figured, you know what would be really good? big book. So I found one that was surprisingly cheap. It was only £9, so I just made up the difference. Neil Gaiman's American Gods. I've heard big things about this book. It's rather large. 
it's the author's preferred version or what do they call it the yeah the author's preferred text so essentially what that means is he released a copy of this which was sort of it had some edits made to it there were things cut out there were things that he didn't really have time to expand upon and then he wasn't quite happy with it so what he did was he released another version which made some changes and put some things back in and then he wrote a short novel that was in the same universe. And then this is just all of that put together. It's like the definitive edition. It's got all of the story. It's got everything. And I've heard rumour that this is going to be made into a TV series a la Game of Thrones. And that just sounds awesome. So I figured I love Neil Gaiman's work on Doctor Who. I couldn't quite get into his The Graveyard book, but I've heard it won like the Carnegie Award, didn't it? I took part in that, by the way. I don't know what I voted for, but it won the Carnegie Award in some year that I was a part of it. And I can't wait to read this. It's going to be deliciously dark. I know it is. And George R. R. Martin actually wrote a review on it. Well, there you go. Sorted. After that is another one that I got for Christmas. My uncle and his girlfriend got me this. And, oh, it's just, I wish I'd never said that. Everlasting gaffes of the famous. He loves me reading these books, these sorts. They're just the best things. It's just full of shit that people said that's funny. And I've got a bunch of stuff like that, like Road Rage, a, An Angry Driver's Guide, and just a bunch of stuff. And it's going to be so good. I adore these books. Oh, we're getting through them. We're getting through them. We're about halfway done of the books I have to read. Oh, Jesus Christ. This one is a double whammy, this next stuff. So, I'm a big fan of the Assassin's Creed video game series. Um, I actually wrote, like, a three-page article on the series for my English work. My English language work, I believe. Oh, I'm a big fan of it. So... Oliver Bowden, Bowden, however you pronounce his name, sorry dude, he writes adaptations of the games. And I've read Renaissance and Brotherhood, which cover Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood respectively. And I picked up these other two because I feel they really expand upon what the games lay out. Even with Renaissance and Brotherhood, which is in my cupboard over there, the, it just expands upon everything the games give to you, especially these two. I'll show you why. We start off with Assassin's Creed, The Secret Crusade, The Untold Story of Altair, the main assassin, the master assassin, sorry. Um, as anyone who's played these games knows, Assassin's Creed 1 was sort of like a prototype, a proof of concept of what the game series could be, which Assassin's Creed 2 and further games then went on went on to um, almost expand upon and perfect. Because Atahe is like this amazing historical assassin who was the best there is at what he does, and the what he does isn't very nice, Wolverine. <laughs> and the game didn't really convey that to us. We're supposed to respect this brilliant guy, but... The game felt restricted, and so his story did. And this book should tell his story properly, and I'm really excited to read it. The second one is Assassin's Creed Forsaken. Now, seeing Connor on the front cover there, you might think, oh, this is just going to be an adaptation of Assassin's Creed 3. No, it's not. This is actually a fill in the gaps between Assassin's Creed 3 and Assassin's Creed 4. This is basically Assassin's Creed 3.5, if you will. So, AC3 dealt with Connor Kenway, uh, Radon Hagedon, if you want to use his Native American name, and then Assassin's Creed 4 dealt with Edward Kenway, his grandfather. This deals with Haytham, Connor's father and Edward's son, and it tells his story, because, um, in case you didn't know, spoilers, I guess, Haytham is a Templar, but he was raised an assassin and he's conflicted over the feelings he has for his son and his dedication to the Templar Order and stuff like that. And this tells Haytham's story of growing up and dealing with all this 
conflict in his mind and stuff. And I absolutely can't wait to read it. Oliver Bowden is a great author. And it's just going to be so fun discovering all this hidden lore. I love that about games, when they have hidden lore to discover. This one I picked up at a charity shop. We've got quite a few charity shops local, and I love getting, like, anything I can from there. It's a treasure trove of just stuff, like clothes and, and classic games and just books. They've got shelves and shelves of books. And this one I saw for 50p. Just had to have it. Look at that beauty. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Jules Verne, and it's a beautiful copy, almost untouched, I can't, look at that, I can't wait to read it, it's, I've heard great things about this, never actually read it before, I, I don't even really know what it's about, other than the obvious, 20,000 leaves of the sea, but, I, I don't know, it's just one of those books that everyone knows, and it's just like, oh, it was such a great piece of, literature and you, everyone should read it. So I am. I'm going to read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and it's gonna be just the best. Anyone who watches British comedy will know who this guy is. Anyone who knows about racism and sexism and all of that will know who this guy is. He's a very controversial guy. It's Frankie Boyle. I love him. Because he's just so unapologetically funny. You, I can't... A lot of people hate him, but I adore his comedy. Because you know he's not serious. He wants to wind you up. He wants to do all of these things. And then he wrote a book called Work, Consume, Die. You are bored. This is the antidote. And it, I've already read some of it. Like, where am I? I'm on page 35. And it's just, like, stories of his life. For example, how he he went to a friend's house and just got so super high. And then the police came round and they had to just act as if they weren't doing anything illegal. And, oh my god. I can't wait to just read about his fucking weird life gonna be bloody brilliant. So that concludes the giant ass kind of Disney book video that I just made. You tell me down in the comments below what books you're reading, what Disney films you enjoy, everything that you have to say to me about what I've just said to you. Bang it down there, I'll be sure to read every single comment, reply to as many as I can, go for it. Have a fun day. Viewers... Hmm...